students of Ghana Christian International High School and we urge you all to subscribe to his Gov TV. Thank you. Hello there, you are welcome to His Golf TV. Um, before we begin with today's discussion, I would like to remind you to subscribe to our channel if um, this is your first time of watching our videos. Again, we thank you for uh, our subscribers, those who have um, subscribed already. Uh, we are at 1K and uh, we thank you very much for your support. Uh, we pray that you keep on subscribing for us. Uh, good. And then you also share our um, videos and um, links to your other um, students or teachers or anybody that you feel is interested in the history or in the studying of history. Good. So today we are looking at um, the role of Indewu Rajakpa Lanta in the expansion of the Gunja State. Um, with this topic, um, it's for Form 2 SHS, um, and it's under the origin of the Gunja State. So I would do a video, uh, I mean, a kind of a short documentary about the origin of the Gunja State. I don't want to um, have um, a lecture like this on the origin of the Gunja State. Um, therefore, I will do um, a, a video, a short documentary video with a narration of the origin of the Gunja states. And so I, I may include the link uh, in the description. If it is not there, you can also check um, through our video uh, a playlist and uh, I'm sure you'll find it there. Um, today we are looking at one of the important kings um, that helped in the uh, expansion of the Gunja kingdom. Already, uh, we know that the Gunja Kingdom was uh, founded by uh, Mande warriors, all right, who who were led by Wadna uh, uh, Wadna Baga, all right, and so one of the uh, most important kings, like for instance, if you were to talk about the Asante, we may say Obri Abua or Seitutu Naprempe Onko laid down the foundation the expansion, you know, of the Ashanti kingdom. The same way if you go to the Gonja people, in the Wura, Jakpa, uh, Somalia, you know, he had about four names, was the one who actually expanded the Gonja kingdom to be uh, the most powerful empire in the northern part of Ghana. And today we are going to look at the role that he played in that expansion, all right? So let's look at our lesson objectives for um, today. So our lesson objectives for today is quite simple. Uh, by the end of this lesson, um, you should be able to um, identify the role played by Somalia, Indewura, Jakpa, Lanta uh, in the expansion of the Gunja states. So what did Indewura, Jakpa um, um, do? Uh, what are some of the role that he played in the expansion of the Gunja states? And this uh, should be uh, something that should guide us um, in our uh, lessons today. So let's begin with the introduction. Of course, we cannot learn about the role that Indewura Dakpa played um, in the expansion of the Gunja kingdom without looking at who Indewura Dakpa is. I have over here, uh, if you look at the, the pictures on your right hand side, some pictures depicting in the Wura Jakpa. You can see the Jakpa Palace over here, and you can see him with a sword, some, I mean, an arm with a sword. Uh, there is also a technical senior high school which has been named after him uh, in the Gonja area. So, in the Wura Jakpa Senior High School, there is also a mausoleum where he was buried. Or in Ted, so that is the, the mausoleum you see over there. And this is also a horse, uh, Indewura and a horse, uh, a statue depicting um, uh, Indewura's uh, expedition and invasion. Uh, and this is also a, um, a statue uh, also depicting Indewura and Jakpa. So, who is this man who has so many things named after him? 
in the Gonja area. You know, as you have seen in the pictures over there, there are so many uh, areas which have in the Uradakwa's name attached to it. So who is this uh, man? Now, in the Uradakwa, Atlanta, Somalia, was the fifth of course, Gonja kings, all right, after Nabaga, all right? So uh, he was the fifth king after Nabaga, and uh, uh, of course, so the fifth king, so it means um, there was a first king, the second king, the third king, fourth king, and then the fifth king of the Gunja state. Now his name, Jakpa, means conqueror, um, true spear, or the spear holder. So I am sure that when you look at the map, uh, the, uh, the horse, and also the horse and himself over here, plus the, as, as you can see here, in front of his palace, they have a hand. His hand is holding a spear um, to depict the meaning of the jackpa, all right? And so a conqueror through spears. And these invaders uh, were using horses and spears um, to fight. And so he became known as jackpa because of probably his skillful use of these spears and horses um, in conquering many states. So that is why you see uh, an arm with a spear, right, at the other side of, uh, in front of the palace. Okay, good. Now, Somalia, uh, Jakpa was a trader from Mali, or the Mande, uh, of course. He became bankrupt. You know, the, 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 these stories are found in oral tradition, so very often uh, you may find um, contradictions here and there. But then, if you have any um, extra information, uh, regarding what we are doing or, or, or teaching today, you can also include it um, in the in the comment section. But what I know is that um, in the Ula, uh, in the Ula Dakpa uh, was a Mande um, trader, and he became bankrupt. Okay, uh, and you, you understand me? I mean, the meaning of bankrupt. So when we say you are bankrupt, it means you have nothing on you. Then he decided to consult uh, a soothsayer. Okay. And, um, the, you know, in those days, divination was, was something very common. So he went there to inquire about his future. And the soothsayer told him that he was not going to inherit any um, kingdom in the Mande um, area or the Mali area, uh, but he was going to inherit a kingdom outside uh, the Mande area or the Mali Area and therefore, uh, Jakpa decided to then this you know to to move away from Mali and then go to uh, then he came you know he came down south uh, to where he came to found the the Gonja Kingdom. So that's somehow an oral tradition regarding um, how Jakpa um, got to the uh, forgot to be part of the Gonja Kingdom. Now, he was he said to have extended the Gunja Kingdom through wars. So as I have already indicated, uh, he extended the Gunja Kingdom through wars. Now, um, he fought so many battles. He fought so many battles and defeated a lot of um, um, kingdoms and states, uh, which we will be looking at. Um, he died fighting the Asante. He tried to also fight the Asante. Uh, he tried to conquer the I mean, Asante after um, conquering all the states in the northern part of the country, he decided to come down south in the forest uh, regions to also conquer the ever-powerful Asante Empire. But that war led to his death. He was not successful in that war. And so he died um, fighting the Asante uh, in the battle towards the Yeji uh, and Kaba, uh, 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 Yeji to Kabako area there, all right? And so his body was interred in Bupe. And so if you go to Bupe, today in the central uh, Gunja uh, district, you will find uh, the tomb of Indewura Jakpa over there. So this is where you see his tomb over here. So this is a, a short uh, introduction to who Indewura Jakpa was. So let's then look at the role that he played uh, as, a, as, as a fifth king. What role did Indewura Jakpa play? Uh, in the expansion of the Gunja Kingdom. So the first role that he played was that he was able to defeat the Bono State in 1639. 
Okay. Uh, now, the Bono state uh, was the first Akan state, all right, to emerge uh, great. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you read the history of the Akans, you realize that the Bono state was the area where a lot of them actually immigrated from. So the Bono state became the first Akan state to emerge, and they were very, very powerful at that time. And so the Bono state posed a threat, a very great threat to the existence and survival of the Gunja kingdom. Because as at the time when the Gunja state was emerging, you know, was becoming powerful and conquering um, neighboring states, it was at that same time that the, the Bono state was very, very powerful. Okay? And therefore, the existence of the Bono state posed a very great threat to the um, survival of the Gonja uh, because if the Bono also detect that Gonja was expanding, um, the Bono may attack and conquer the Gonja. So the existence of the Bono state was a major threat to the, uh, to, um, um, to the survival of the Gonja state. Because at this point in time, in the Uradakpa had um, you know, conquered states like the Dagomba and all of that. So there wasn't any much um, 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 say, um, powerful state within the northern area. However, uh, just around the forest, at the, at, the, at, the, at the end of the forest area, the Bono was there. And so, in the Urajakpe's ability uh, to defeat the Bono in 1639, remove that Bono threat to the, uh, uh, the existence of the Gunja. And so this paved way for the Gunja's expansion because when Inde Urajapa was able to conquer the Bono state, there wasn't any much uh, powerful state uh, in the region around the, the Gunja area to attack or to, to, uh, to, uh, to fight the Gunja. So this, we are saying, was one of the roles played by Inde Urajapalanta in the expansion of the Gunja state. With his defeat of the Bono state in 1639, um, uh, that, uh, you know, threat, that great threat uh, was now eliminated. And so the Gonja people or the Gonja state or kingdom now could expand um, without fear. All right. Let's look at the next one. Um, he also played a very important role in the Malian expedition. All right. In the Malian expedition to Begu uh, in the 16th century. Uh, and so when you read the, when you listen to oral tradition regarding the origin of the, of the Gonja state. Um, it is said that the king of Mali, or the Mansa of Mali, you know, detected that there was a fall in the supply of gold, all right, uh, from, from the south, because there was a trade between the southern part, I mean, the northern part of Ghana today, as well as the Mali, that's the Trans-Saharan trade. Uh, and so, the, the king of Mali, or the Mansa of Mali, and Mansa means king uh, of Mali, you know, detected that there was a fall in the supply of goods from the northern part of Ghana. And so he sent uh, expedition uh, invaders uh, to go to the northern part of Ghana, which is, uh, of course, present day where the, the Gunja people are, to find out the reason for the, the drop in supply of gold. And by then, we realized that uh, Mansa Musa, uh, sorry, Indewura Jakpa was part of that expedition. So those expeditions, the Monday invaders settled in northern Ghana and began an expansion program which saw the defeat of the Dagumba and subsequently ruled by the Monday invaders. So, um, you know, when they, the, the invaders, those who were sent on the expedition by the Mansa of Mula, uh, Mansa of Mali arrived in the Gunja area. They did not go back. They did not return back to the uh, Mali Empire, and so they decided to expand with the help of the of the Juala um, traders who were found in Begu. They decided to embark on several wars of expansion, and the defeat uh, contributed to the expansion of the Gunja in the sense that. Now, Gunja did not have any formidable contender to that region because uh, the Dagombas were somehow the most powerful or the powerful kingdom 
or state in that area, that northern part. Uh, and so when in the Wura Dakpa, uh, in, uh, who was part of that expedition, was able to conquer the Dagumba state or kingdom, we are saying that um, it also paved the way uh, towards the expansion of the Gonja state because there wasn't any more um, formidable um, contender um, in that uh, region. Good. Let's look at the next one. Now, we also say that Indewura, of course, also conquered and absorbed their western and eastern neighbors. Okay? So, it is on record that the Gonja extended to the area of the confluence of the white and black Volta, as well as further eastward, as far as the borders of Anumba, hence pushing the Dagumba further north and east. All these expansionist activities occurred under the uh, Jakpa Lanta era. And so when you look at the, this is the, this is the, well, this is Dagumba, you can see Dagumba over here. Um, they have Nanumba also here. And this is the Gunja, all right? This is the empire we are talking about, uh, the Gunja empire over here. So in the Wura, again, um, conquered states around the Gunja area. So um, states um, that were in the western and the eastern neighbors. Uh, example, as far as the borders of uh, Nanumba, you can see Nanumba over here, all right? And so that should um, tell you how important this man was and how he was able to expand um, the territories of the Gunja states. Now, one, another, the last one that we may talk about was uh, Somalia's uh, conquering of Dabuya. And this was a very, very important um, uh, step um, in the expansion of the Gunja. Now, in pre-colonial Ghana, um, Dabuya was the only place where salt could be obtained through extraction from salt impregnated rocks. So in pre-colonial Ghana, almost salt was extracted or was produced in Dabuya. So Dabuya was a salt producing area. Okay. Uh, and almost the whole part of the people who lived in Ghana at that time were obtaining salt from Dabuya. Now, Dabuya was under the control of the Dagumba state. Okay, so the Dagumbas had already conquered uh, Dabuya. And this is Dabuya, if you see the map over here. Uh, let me change the color of my okay, so that I can see it well. So this is Dabuya. This is Dabuya over here. Okay, and this state, I think it could be found somewhere around here, if you are to compare here. Now, Dabuya was under the control. It was a vassal state to the um, to the Dagumba, okay? And so what happened was that Somalia conquering Dagumba, uh, then Dabuya then became also a vassal state to the Gunja state because, uh, because even though they were not conquered directly, because they were under or they were vassal state to uh, Dagumba, and then now the Dagumbas were now being, or were now defeated. So Daboya now became a vassal also to the Gonja states. Okay, and so because of that, Daboya became the main major source of revenue to the Gonja states. Okay, okay. Uh, this gave Gonja a lot of revenue uh, to embark on wars of what expansion because these wars of expansion, you need a lot of money, uh, a lot of wealth, because you may have to feed soldiers in and out. And so with the conquering of Dabuya uh, by Ndewura Dakpa, uh, also brought a lot of wealth and revenue to the kingdom. And don't forget that um, because you have wealth, you can be able to even purchase uh, um, firearms and, and other things. Good. So I think... <clears throat> We have come to that. We have come to an end. Uh, we, I mean, we've come to the end of today's discussion. Um, uh, yes, like I said, if you have any contributions, you can add it uh, in the comment section. All right. So let's try our hand on this 
right? This is a past question, uh, which came uh, in 2017. Um, identify any four role played by Somalia in the war at Palanta in the expansion of the Gunja state. So you try your hand on this. You may meet it in the Wasi again. All right, so thank you for your time. Subscribe to our channel. Have a nice